Michael Swickard here. Welcome to Enchanting People of New Mexico, sponsored by the Fresh Chili Company in Las Cruces, New Mexico. Our award-winning Hatch Green and Red Chili is from locally owned farms in Hatch, New Mexico, the chili capital of the world. Hit subscribe to automatically get these podcasts. Every Monday and Friday, we have regular historical and cultural podcasts. Wednesdays, like today, we celebrate people important to our area. One of the interesting people in New Mexico is Charlie Johnson, Dr. Charlie Johnson. When he was just Charlie Johnson, he came to our little slice of paradise almost by accident. You see, he was raised in Big Spring, Big Spring Texas. He intended to play football beyond high school. He had played football and basketball in high school. One problem, he got a football scholarship to Shrivener Institute, which is now Shrivener University, a private Presbyterian university in Kerrville, Texas. But, and there is a but here, the year Charlie Johnson arrived, the football program was canceled. So Charlie transferred to the College of Agriculture and Mechanical Arts in Las Cruces, New Mexico, which while he was a student changed its name to New Mexico State University. One problem, he couldn't get a scholarship for football, so he got a scholarship for Aggie basketball, and an odd thing happened to him. So Charlie Johnson, when he came to Las Cruces, was a basketball player. This is a bit complicated. In 1955, Dr. Roger Corbett was selected as the president of the college. He made sweeping changes, including making the college a university and changing the name to New Mexico State University. He pledged to increase the football and basketball programs, which had been lackluster at best. He hired a very successful football coach, Warren Woodson, for what was then a large sum of money, 12000 a year. That would have been about 130000 today, so... Even with the, with inflation, it wasn't as much as they do now. Woodson, he did really good with the football program, except he could not find a quarterback that he liked. Basketball coach Presley Askew was talking with Woodson one day and mentioned he had a Texas-born player that had great hands, and this player's name was Charlie Johnson. Warren Woodson came and watched him play Aggie basketball one game and then persuaded Charlie to change sports. He knew that Charlie had wanted to play football, and he gave him a scholarship to be the Aggie quarterback. Football was Charlie's interest. The Aggies had two consecutive wins in the El Paso Sun Bowl, and Charlie Johnson was the most valuable player in both of those Sun Bowl games. And it was something hasn't been equaled since then. The same player win twice in the Sun Bowl and be the most valuable player. The Aggies had an unbeaten 11-0 record in 1960 that they have not equaled since. A little trivia. Charlie Johnson was the first player for the NMSU Aggies to have his jersey number, number 33, retired. And he graduated in 1961 with a perfect 4.0 grade point average with a Bachelor's of Science degree in Chemical Engineering. The defining quality of Charlie Johnson, besides having, as Presley Askew said, good hands, was that he studied the game plan, the opponents, and his own players. I was on a board with uh, one of his players many years later, a few years ago, but the player was still talking about Charlie Johnson, and he played end for the Aggies in that 1960 game. That person said that Charlie Johnson spent his time on the field and off the field thinking about the game and what each player could and could not do. Therefore, when a play was called, it was for a really serious reason. The effect was an undefeated season and a second win in the El Paso Sun Bowl. The professional scouts caught that Charlie Johnson had good skills, but a really first-class football mind, and for the, he had that for the position of quarterback. Char Charlie Johnson, after the 1960 season at NMSU, went to the NFL, the National Football League, was drafted in the 10th round, and had contract offers actually from two teams, San Diego 
Chargers and the St. Louis Cardinals. He selected St. Louis, where the first year he kind of struggled. That rookie year, he only got to pass the ball 13 times. But, and there is a but here, in the next five years in St. Louis, he was the starter and was voted the NFL Pro Bowl in 1963. In 1966, he led the league with four fourth-quarter comebacks for wins. A little more trivia. Charlie Johnson was featured on the Sports Illustrated cover not once, but twice. He was December 1964 and November 1965. Every time they wrote about Charlie Johnson, NMSU was mentioned, and the effects of Presley Askew and Warren Woodson paid even better dividends. Like with every high-achieving person, Charlie Johnson was a man for all seasons, not the meaning of the 66 Academy Award-winning film, which had to do with religion, but he was for all seasons, the football season, the military season, the business season, and the teaching and higher education season. He was the man of the hour. Starting with a very highly competitive nature, Charlie was a good athlete with a vision of what he was doing that was excellent and also where he wanted to go. In the National Football League, he played for three teams and was successful with all three. His last team was the Denver Broncos, a team I personally enjoyed since I lived five years in the Denver area, suffered through those years of little success. Well, they did have a guy named Floyd Little, and he was successful, but the team had no real success. Um, and uh, that was what something that uh, Charlie Johnson was able to change. Michael Swickert here, Enchanting People of New Mexico. Each Wednesday, we do a podcast on people who are special to New Mexico. Hit subscribe to automatically get these podcasts. So in just a few minutes of celebrating Aggie football player Charlie Johnson, there are so many other aspects to feature in the now 84-year-old Charlie Johnson. Now, when he was at NMSU, he was in Army ROTC, the Reserve Officer Training Corps, in Las Cruces, and while at New Mexico State University and in the NFL, he continued his academic studies. So he delayed his officer commission until 1967 when he was called to active duty. From all the injuries he got on the football field, he was deemed not fit for combat duty, and he was stationed as a second lieutenant in the United States Army Reserve for two years and worked for the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA, while also continuing as an NFL quarterback. He would fly back in time for the games, but otherwise was doing something with NASA. A busy person, he worked on his doctoral degree while still playing football, got his master's and Ph.D. in chemical engineering at Washington University in St. Louis, again, while playing football at the highest level. He left the St. Louis Cardinals, was traded to the Houston Oilers for two seasons, and then spent the final four years of his career with the Denver Broncos. In the 1973 season with the Denver Broncos, Charlie Johnson's leadership uh, really shone through. The Denver Broncos had their first, are you ready for this, winning season ever. They went 7-5 and five with two ties. It was like he took NMSU Aggies to an 11-0, their only undefeated season in the modern era. He was an inspiring leader with uh, that important moment of a winning season. You had to have a winning season before you could go on. Later, some later, the Denver Broncos went on years later to the Super Bowl, and finally they had a victory under the quarterback John Elway. So, Part of it started with Charlie Johnson, and it went all the way to the Super Bowl a number of years later. Charlie Johnson is on the Denver Broncos Ring of Fame, which was created in 1984 by the team owner to honor former players and administrators who played significant roles in that franchise's history. Charlie was inducted into the Ring of Fame in 1987. With his chemical engineering degrees, master's and doctorate, he spent a couple decades in the Houston area working in chemical engineering, both with companies he owned and for other businesses. 
He had and has both the theoretical aspects and the practical aspects of chemical engineering, and Houston was a rich environment to work in those areas. Now, to understand Charlie Johnson's professional activities, I need to do a little bit of explaining about chemical engineering. It is a field of study. It's been around for 170 years or so, really a lot in the last 50, 60 years. It looks at the design and operation of chemical processing plants using the principles of chemistry, physics, biology, mathematics, and economics to improve the processing and transportation of energy materials. Houston, with all those chemical plants of different types and processes, was a great place for all the possibilities of Charlie Johnson's professional career in chemical engineering. But the best was yet to come for us in New Mexico. For a second time, Tex and Charlie Johnson packed up and came to Las Cruces. The first time he did so was to play ball for the Aggies and get a degree. Then, in the year 2000, he was hired by the New Mexico State University College of Engineering to be the head of the chemical engineering department. He was that for four years and then became a professor of chemical engineering until his retirement in 2012. But there's one more note. You think every time I look, there's more stuff. When head football coach Hal Mummy was fired after a disappointing season, Dr. Charlie Johnson was appointed as interim head coach during the search for a replacement. What a circle from coming to Las Cruces to play basketball for Presley Askew because there was no football scholarships available for him to be a two-time most valuable player in the El Paso Sun Bowl to 15 years as an NFL quarterback on three teams to then be able to fill in as the interim coach for the NMSU Aggie football team. One other inside look at Charlie Johnson. It's my understanding that even today, the engineering students at NMSU really value the Charlie Johnson football playing cards. <laughs> it's a sign of respect they still have for him as a professor of chemical engineering to have their own Charlie Johnson football card. Our area is fortunate that Charlie Johnson moved here not once, but twice. We have been blessed by his athletes athletic, managerial, engineering, and teaching abilities. He is one of our enchanting people of New Mexico, a man for all seasons of New Mexico. Now let me speak something about our sponsor, the Fresh Chili Company of Las Cruces. The 2023 Big Jim Hatch uh, Green Chili Special Reserve Veritol is coming. Veritol means that this product will only be made with Big Jim Chili. It's a little sweeter than other chilies and has a medium heat level and I have to tell you is my favorite, my very favorite uh, chili that I like to eat. The Harvest of Big Jim is going on right now. Jars of this will be available in a few weeks. You can pre-order at the Fresh Chili Company website, freshchilico.com. Now, I want to tell you about something that's about to be put on the shelves of the Fresh Chili Company. And yes, I've had an advanced taste of a jar which went fast in my household. It is Hatch Sweet Onion Dressing. Everybody knows that Hatch Valley is renowned for its chili since it's the chili capital of the world. Onions from the Hatch Valley and the surrounding fields are some of the sweetest and of all the varieties, sweeter than most. The Hatch Sweet Onion Dressing combines those Hatch Sweet Onions with avocado oil and our very own Green Chili Dijon Mustard to create a dressing that is so good you can marinate and baste with it and douse your salads and fruit with it. Coming very soon, I certainly will mention on these podcasts the day that it's on the shelves, but it is coming soon. Michael Swickard here. This is Enchanting People of New Mexico. Thank you for your time today. We'll always have lots of news and stories about New Mexico in these podcasts. If you have something you want me to talk about in a future podcast, write me at michael at freshchilico.com, michael at freshchilico.com. The same is true. If there is someone you'd like me to talk about who was important to our little slice of paradise, have a great rest of your day. Oh, yes, and eat plenty of that good Hatch Valley chili. Like I always say, some chili is good and more is better. Bye for now.